Your Omaha High is being sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Coles Pharmacy and Home Care, Certified Transmission, Centrist Federal Credit Union, Shoulder, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Performance Auto Group, Two Men and a Truck, Crane Landscape Construction, Shout Weekly, Mid-America Speakers Bureau, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Critter Control. Welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that will leave you feeling great about yourself, Omaha's heroes, and Omaha, where we live, work, and play. So park yourself on the bench and have fun. Hi, and welcome to Your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg, the show that you return to each and every week to get that real good feeling about what? About yourself, about a nonprofit here in Omaha, Nebraska, and about an individual who has done some tremendous work and brought so much prestige not only to the city, to the state, and also nationally. Because in a moment, after we do our four motivational vignettes and our public service announcement, you're going to have the opportunity to meet Miss Outstanding Nebraska Teen, who also placed fourth in the Nationals. You're going to have an opportunity to talk to Morgan Holland. Morgan, we so much look forward to chatting with you in just a few moments. And each and every week, you do turn in to listen to four brand new motivational vignettes, ones that are designed for you to help you achieve anything, I mean it, anything that you want to in life. So what do you say we get started? Let's begin to talk about homework. Now, each and every one of us remember that when our elementary school children come home, one of the things we love to do with them because it makes us feel very useful is to help them with their homework. And you know what I'm talking about, the easy spelling, the easy mathematics, the easy science, the very simple social studies. And we get so much pride in having that quality time with them, sharing an opportunity to help them with their homework. And you know the eyes that they look up at us with and they keep on saying, hey, mom, dad, you are so intelligent. You really helped me out. I look so much forward to taking these times so that you can help me out. But all of a sudden, what happens? They get older <laughs> and they come to you and they say, mom, dad, help me with, with homework. It's advanced trigonometry. It's advanced geometry. It's calculus. It is heavy earth science. It's physics. It's chemistry. I need your help. What do we do? <laughs> Listen, uh, I'm not quite sure if I can help you. I'm not familiar with this stuff anymore. And you know what occurs? You become obsolete. You no longer become useful. And then all of a sudden they either do it on themselves or they have study groups and that bond is separated. Unfortunately, the same thing happens in life. We get to use the knowledge that we have, but the knowledge keeps on advancing. It could be in our professions, it could be in our personal life, it could be in anything that we do, and we allow it to happen because we just stop at a particular level. And then what happens? We obsolete ourselves. We become useless, I hate to say this, to our professions. We become useless to society. We begin to wonder why nobody counts on us. The one thing that each and every one of us has to do is make sure that we add to our education as much as we drive our children to add to theirs. We want them to learn more. We have the same obligation. We tell them the more they learn, the more they're gonna advance. That self-talk needs to be in our heads also each and every time. So what I'd like you to do with this vignette is learn what you don't know and take that knowledge, take that information so that not only can you help out your kids, but society, your profession, your family, and most important, yourself. Now, let's talk a little bit about home improvement projects. You know, we have these nice homes, these nice apartments, and all of a sudden we see something and we say, uh-oh, it's outdated, we need to change. It could be a painting job, it could be redoing the kitchen, it could be redoing the living room, it could be redoing the landscaping. Anything that you think needs improvement. So what do you do? You finally make up your mind, and then you begin to save the money for it. Then you begin to look for the contractors. Then you begin to take a look at the time that's necessary to get the project done. 
And all this time, you have one vision in mind, just one, the end of the project. You know there's going to be a lot of work behind it. You know there's going to be dust in the house. You know there's going to be disruption on the outside of the house. You don't care because the only thing you're concerned about is the end of that project. And the planning that you put into it is absolutely amazing. You get the people who are best in doing what they can do to support you, and you get those funds. Now, when it comes to our own personal, our own personal improvement, do we do everything that we just described? Do we take the time to say, this is what my end result will be? Do we take the opportunity to find the right people to educate us, to help us, to give us the seminars? Do we go ahead and always say to ourselves, this is what I want to accomplish. This is how I want to get it done. This is my team. I'm going to tell you something. If we put as much behind our personal and professional improvement and the planning and the people and the understanding and the vision as we do with our home improvement projects when we finally say, hey, I need to improve, you know what I'm about to say. You know how much better that each and every one of us will be. So begin to say to yourself, this is my improvement plan. These are the people that are going to come together to help me out. That's what we want each and every one of us to look out for. And you know, many times we learn a different language. We can take something in English and transfer it to a language that we like. We, it could either be French, it could be Spanish, it could be Italian, it doesn't matter. We can take that concept and translate it any way we want because it's something we desire to do. Well, one of the things I'd like everybody to do now is to learn a new language. Now, what's the language I'm talking about? It's called the positive thinking language. It's very easy. Every time you come up with a negative thought, which is your current language, just go out there and find a positive word to balance it off. And when you do that, you know what will happen. You'll have a new language. Things will be absolutely brand new for you and you're going to be able to transform your thoughts into something totally different. That's the new language. It's called the positive language. The only time I want you to use it is every time, <laughs> not just occasionally. Use it every time you possibly can. So anytime you say to yourself, I can't, you basically say, you know what, I just haven't done it yet. Anytime you hear the word bad, just change it to good. Anytime you hear the word pessimistic, just change it to optimistic. And it's a simple thing like that. So begin your own dictionary that will work for you. And I want to end by saying the other day I met an individual who lays bricks for a living. And actually there were two people. So I said to this individual, what do you do for a living? This person said, I lay bricks. And they were very happy with it. Then I met another individual and said, what do you do for a living? And that particular person said as follows, I lay bricks that builds buildings. <laughs> I lay bricks that builds buildings. In other words, this is what I do, and this is the outcome of the wonderful things that I get to do with my skill. I just don't lay bricks. I build buildings, and in these buildings, people live. They come to work. They go to worship. It doesn't matter. So what I want you to think about is your profession, your occupation, what you do, and just don't say, well, I just do this. Take a look at the outcome and then you begin to add lots of value to what you do. So let's go ahead and take a look at these four motivational vignettes that we just talked about. Remember, it's homework. Make sure you're never obsoleted. Remember that home improvement should be your personal improvement. Remember to learn that new language, the language of positivity, and you learned how to do that. It's very, very, very simple. And then remember, the job that you do builds something. And always keep that in mind so that you can always enjoy it. Now is the time in the show that we always talk about a nonprofit organization. And today we're going to be talking about the Voice Advocacy Center. Listen very carefully. The Voice Advocacy Center assists children, teenagers, and adults who struggle to read, write, and spell due to dyslexia and other related reading disorders and to give families of children who receive special educational services such as learning, emotional, physical, and mental an informed voice and resource in their children's individual educational program. The Voice Advocacy Center is the leader in dyslexia screening and tutoring. You probably didn't know that dyslexia affects one in five people and in the most common being reading difference. 
Dyslexia crosses all racial boundaries, but is more prevalent in African-American and Latino communities. Special education advocacy can be extensive and expensive. If a child receives special, ed special educational services in school, you might find yourself needing an advocate. Advocates can be a, an essential key in helping to ensure that a child with special needs receives a free, appropriate public education and that families of children have meaningful opportunities to participate fully in their development. If you want more information about the Voice Advocacy Center, call them at 402-916-4458 or go to their website at voiceadvocacycenter.com or email them at voiceadvocacycenter at gmail.com. And now is the time in the show where we get to meet an outstanding individual. And this time, I'm not just making up that term, this particular person has the title of Miss Nebraska Outstanding Teen. Now, did she stop in Nebraska? Absolutely not. She competed in the national contest and brought so much pride to herself, her community, Nebraska and Omaha, because she in the entire country actually placed fourth. You're gonna get an opportunity to learn from Morgan Holen about what it means to be an outstanding teen, how she got there, and most important of all, how you can become outstanding in anything that you want to do. Morgan, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, and let's get right started with it. Miss Outstanding Teen Nebraska, what made you pick that particular pageant to participate in, and when did you start? My mom was actually Miss Nebraska, and so my sister and I have always gone to North Platte, Nebraska and watched the Miss Nebraska organization and the pageant every year. And I can just remember being little and looking up at the older girls and viewing them as princesses. And as I grew older, I actually realized that they were very goal-oriented and that they were intelligent and poised and so much more than just the evening gown. And so they were people who wanted to make a difference in the world. And and I wanted to be just like them. So it's something that you started when you were very young and you just said to yourself, when I get older, this is what I want to do. Now, how many of us have had goals when we were little kids, but never really fulfilled them? And now we sit back and we say, you know what, if only I would have. Well, here's a perfect example of somebody who didn't say, if only I would have, they went ahead and actually did it. So when you went to your parents and you say, you know what, I'm ready, I want to begin to compete, <laughs> what kind of support did you get from them? Yeah, well, in anything I do, I know when I commit, I'm going to give 110%. And so when I went to my parents and told them this is something I really want to do, they knew that what I could do and were fully supportive no matter what the outcome was. And how about your friends? Because social life is so important at your age. <laughs> What happened when you went to your friends? You said, you know what, I'm going to compete in this, in that, in this Nebraska contest, or maybe it started in Omaha. What kind of support did you get from them? I think like everything, I got a little bit of both. Some people were very supportive and some were a little unsure of a typical beauty pageant as they would describe it. But as they began to learn about the organization and that uh, the values that are included in it, they became to really like it and they wanted to hear all about it. And one of the platforms, it's the one that you really, really enjoy, is something called Random Acts of Kindness. Now, I've heard that term before, but if somebody asked me to define it, I might have a problem with that. So f help me understand, what does that mean, Random Acts of Kindness? Well, going into the organization, every girl needs to have a platform, and it's something that she wants to promote throughout her year. And so when I was choosing a platform, I was viewing everybody else's, and I was seeing that they were relatable to certain people, but not relatable to everyone. Right. And so as I chose Random Acts of Kindness, it's something that no matter what age you are, no matter how much time you have or the money that comes your way, right. anybody can perform a Random Act of Kindness. And not just that, but they come up at any point of the day all the time. So you're always prepared for it. Right. And you use your personality, you use your background, you use your intelligence to help other people out. So let's go back in the past and let's assume for a moment that nah, you were not involved in this pageant. Mm -hmm. What was the very first random act of kindness that you performed? The very first one I could think of is in elementary school. I, in kindergarten actually, I had a friend who had leukemia and as you can imagine that was 
extremely difficult, but going through each day mm. and just checking in on them and being around the family was a mm. random act of kindness in itself. And at the time, I didn't realize that it was a random act of kindness. I didn't pick it out to perform it, but I look back on it now and realize how much of an, of an impact it made on my life and that I wanted to spread this message to a broader audience. So way back in kindergarten, just acting naturally, Morgan went ahead and did something great for someone that impacted their family, made her feel good, but even more important than that, made the family feel good. And I bet you set a terrific example for all the other kindergarten kids at the time. And about how often do you perform a random act of kindness? Once a month, twice a year, what do you think? Well, there are ample opportunities for you to perform acts of kindness every day, and so I try to make it my goal at least once a day to do so. Wow. And I, as I'm looking back on each day, as I reflect at night, I see what act of kindness I performed that day, and it's not searching for it, but it's just something that kind of naturally happens. That's amazing, because you know how many of us, when we go to sleep at night, we say to ourselves, okay, how much money did I earn today? <laughs> what did I accomplish today? And what did I do that really helps me out? Now, with Morgan, and I hope with each and every one of us, as a result of learning from her, we can now go to sleep at night, even wake up in the morning, and say, okay, what random act of kindness did I do today? Who did I help out? And if you've missed somebody, is there somebody you can go to tomorrow and just kind of make up for it? Because that is what life is all about. Not necessarily how much money we make, but if we want to be motivated, that's the way to do it. What can we do to help somebody else out, even when they don't ask for it? So let's go to the beauty pageant. So you fill out the form. What are the qualifications even to be considered for the pageant? <laughs> You have to be a girl between the age of 13 and 17, and you have to live in the state that you're competing in. Okay. And then as you're competing, you compete in a fitness, in talent, in interview, and in an onstage question, and then you have your platform as well. So at age 13, is that when you uh, started, oh, I'm, I'm 13, I'm ready to go, or? I actually waited till I was about 15, 15. years old. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to be fully prepared, and I felt that at the age of 15, I was ready to go and wanted to tackle the challenge. So when they finally said, yes, you're accepted, what do you have to do to prepare for the competition? Mm -hmm. Well, since you do go through an interview process, you have no idea what the judges can ask you. Everything is sort of free game. Right. And so you want to keep up with your current events, what's going on in the world. And that was something that interests me kind of outside wow. of pageants itself. Sure. So it was very easy for me to kind of keep up with the times. And other than that, practicing your talent and just um, preparing yourself to be the best you can be. And the talent that you use for the competition is? A lyrical dance. I danced to You Raise Me Up, and it was dedicated to my dance teacher who owned and operated our dance studio, Kitty Lee Dance, for over 50 years. And what kind of a dance is, is this again? I'm not familiar with dance that well. I don't know if my viewers yeah. are. What, what yeah. kind of a dance is it? So it's a mix between a ballet and jazz, if yeah. you've ever seen those. It's uh, kind of a combination. It's called lyrical, but it's pretty slow movement, but uh, not very, quite ballet. Very intricate, I, I would assume. Yes. <laughs> and the balance and everything has to be there. When did you first start dancing? I started dancing when I was three years old. So. Three years old. Yes, I've been going for a while. <laughs> so let's see what we have here. We have an individual who started dancing when they were three, used that talent to win a competition, and at the same time, the same time, performs random acts of kindness. You talk about multitasking, especially mm -hmm. at that age. You know how much we can learn from there? All right, so we have the contest, and you're up on stage, just between you and I. Did you want to win? Oh, of course I wanted to win. Okay. Like I said before, I go in putting on 110%. I don't know. All I can do is my best and then let the chips fall where they may and have the judges decide whether I'd be qualified to hold the job for the year. And how did it feel when you won? It was incredible. It was just like a sigh of just excitement and so much hard work going into a moment that I finally accomplished a goal I had set. And what are the responsibilities, now that you have the crown, mm -hmm. what are the responsibilities during the year? Yes, well, it is a job, and there are a lot of responsibilities okay. that come with it, which is something I don't think a lot of people realize. And we go out into our communities, we're constantly um, involved in community service, and speaking about our organization and our personal platform, of course, Brandon Max of Kindness. Sure. Now, how many of us have gotten the dream job that we wanted? 
and we've attained it. We got it. And then we go to our offices or we go to wherever that particular job takes us. We put our hands behind our head. We put our feet up on the desk and we say, hey, I got the job. All right, now I don't have to work as hard. This should be a very important lesson for every one of us. She's got the crown. Now she's got to do something with it. And she's got to continue to bring great stories to people. All right. So now we've got Nebraska. <laughs> All of a sudden, you get the opportunity to compete in nationals. Tell yes. us about that. It was just an eye-opening experience. You're paired. There are 53 girls because there's uh, the District of Columbia, Virgin Islands, and um, also Puerto Rico, wow. and you actually don't spend any time with your family. You are paired with a roommate. Mine was from Pennsylvania, okay. and you are kind of on your own for about nine days, and so you have to get up on your own and get ready for all of the rehearsals and the demanding rehearsals, and just be prepared to handle yourself um, without people around you telling you what to do. So all of a sudden, independence at the yes. age of 17. Yes. In <laughs> other words, I love what she said. Nobody's there to tell me what to do, which means self-motivation. Here is an individual that has taken all their training, all their background, all their achievements that they want to accomplish and said, you know what, I'm on my own. It's up to me. Was it nerve-wracking? Oh, it was nerve-wracking, but excitement nerve-wracking at the same time. I was just happy to be there, happy to represent the state of Nebraska and just give my all and see where it lands. And what, what was your best memory? of the Nationals? I think just after the winner won, she was from Georgia, right. and she did her walk, and she had just been crowned, and she was so excited. But I think what really showcased what our class was about was after she turned around, all of us came running towards her, just hugging her because we That's were so cool. thrilled for her. And just, we really became, when you have nine days without your phone and without your family, you really become a unit. And so I think that's really a moment that I loved. And that's very, very inspiring because I'm gonna go back to business for a moment. You know, sometimes there's a promotion that's available. Someone gets a higher job. And this is a great example of that. So they get a higher job. And of course, they were part of a team and they were the ones that were selected. Now, if you were the one that was selected, that's terrific. If you weren't, do you do what Morgan did as well as the other contestants? Do you go to the person that got that higher tier, that got that crown, and sincerely, from your heart, congratulate them? There's a magnificent lesson to be learned in that regard. And of course, you came in as fourth runner-up, which, when you really think about it, is one <laughs> heck of an achievement. That, that's something to be really proud of and pleased. And I know you had that great Morgan smile on because <laughs> that just some, comes so natural for you. So now you're back in Nebraska. You continue to do the random acts of kindness. Yeah. But again, just between you and I, <laughs> when the contest is over, when your year is over, I should say, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? I mean, you don't, you're not required to do these things anymore. You can just go back to being 18 or going yeah. after your education. You've got that option. What are you going to do? Um, well, although I won't be holding the title, I'm still Morgan, and I'm still me, and I still hold the values without having to align them with the organization. It was something that I was doing before I was crowned, and something I was doing while I was crowned, and definitely something I'll continue in the future. And talk about your future. What is it that you want to do for your life's goals? What, what's your professional goal? And if you don't have one by now, that's okay. Yeah, I actually, I haven't exactly figured out which one I want to go to for sure. But luckily through this organization, since it is a scholarship organization, right. lots of universities have offered me scholarships simply for, for where I placed at the national right. level. So let's assume for a moment that you have a audience, I'm gonna say of 50 people in front of you, and they're made up of teens, they're made up of adults, they're made up of grandparents, and they're looking to you for about 30 to 45 seconds of advice on what they can do to continuously do random acts of kindness. What would you tell them? I would say just look throughout their day. There are so many opportunities every day that it, you, if you just take them, you, there's so many little things. I mean, it's fall right now. If you rake the leaves for someone else oh, wow. or if you bring a meal to someone else, there's so many little things each day yeah. that we sometimes just pass. And you can take those opportunities and turn them into acts of kindness. Absolutely. It's got to make everybody feel so terrific. And the other thing I want to ask you, if there was one thing, that you would want the viewers to take away from the interview and the magnificent stories you shared with us, what would that one thing be? 
I would say that the Miss America's Outstanding Teen Organization is a scholarship organization and it's a great way to attain your goals if those are uh, goals you want to set and to also look for all of the random acts of kindness that are uh, um, opportunities in your life every day. Yes. Now, how many of us are going to take that opportunity to do exactly what Morgan just said? I think that's just a magnificent way to think about life. Imagine you getting up in the morning and you say to yourself, I know someone that I can do some kindness for. Imagine someone actually doing kindness for you and you say thank you to them. That is what not only means Miss Outstanding or Mr. Outstanding, you get to wear that crown that not an organization gave to you, but that somebody that you helped actually gave to you. That's such a reward for life. Morgan, thank you so much. The information you gave us was absolutely magnificent. I know it's changed me. <laughs> thank you. And I know that I'm going to take more of an opportunity every day to do more random acts of kindness than I do because I do want to see that smile from someone that I'm helping out that says, hey, thanks. Without you, I would not have been able to do it. And thank you so much for sharing all of that information with us. So this week, what did we learn? We learned about homework. We learned about home improvement. We learned about language. We learned about bricklayers. We learned about the Voice Advocacy Center. We learned about random acts of kindness and what each and every one of these can do for you and what they should do for you, all on this week's edition of your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg. So what is going to be coming up next week on your Omaha High with Andy Greenberg? We're going to have an individual who does a magnificent job in supporting all nonprofits here in Omaha, Nebraska through her publication, the ALH Publications. We're going to have Andy Hoig join us, and she's going to share with us some tremendous information about her organization, about all the nonprofits that she supports. So be sure to tune in again next week, right here, Saturday, 10 o'clock in the morning, on your Omaha High with Andy Greenberry. And in the meantime, stay high with Random Acts of Kindness. Your Omaha High was sponsored by Best Buy Signs, creator of the Omaha Parks Program, OmahaFastFoods.com, Cole's Pharmacy and Home Care, Certified Transmission, Centrist Federal Credit Union, Sholden, Rotella's Italian Bakery, La Peeps Restaurant, Performance Auto Group, Two Men and a Truck, Crane Landscape Construction, Shout Weekly, Mid-America Speakers Bureau, Farm Bureau Financial Services, Critter Control,